Hey, welcome to the Rick Elves Real Estate Show with our Arizona news today. And uh, we do this every week. I'm Rick McCall with DXP Realty with Jackie and Ruby with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. Pat McMasters with Price Mortgage. Happy Thursday, everybody. How are you doing? Good back this, to you. This is the traveling edition. I've got a, the Hampton Inn in Sholo, Arizona is letting me use their... I could have 600 people in here. I'm in a big conference room. <laughs> wow. Big round table with a laptop set up. I'm ready to rock and roll. So it's a... Uh, um, I thought you my, were in Payson. No, I'm in Sholo. Oh, okay. And, uh, so my my Wi-Fi setup and my data setup in my RV is not strong enough to do a stream. So otherwise, the whole stream would be... So, I, I, we, it, I, so we don't <laughs> want to do that to people. But, I know. I've been missing your morning shows. Yeah, yeah. I uh, They were... We're just going to have to get back to it next week or so. But been an interesting week. Um, in interesting, and I'm going to show you some numbers in that it doesn't feel like it's really moving. Um, our listings are still 16,700. And this at this time last week, we were 16,600. So this flood of mortgages coming on, I want to, I want to touch on that for just a moment. because I think this, I said that. Yeah, you, well, and hey, proof is in the pudding. And here's, and I got a video coming out on that that I thought would launch last night, but it didn't. But uh, but take a look at this. Um, and that is, you know, it's our seven day moving average. And it sales went down from 2,700 homes under contract to 2,500. But listings dipped as well. But then I kind of sucked some numbers out of the side over here. It's probably hard to see. But um, in this total of 16,744, 1,880 are new construction. And 2,000 are I buyers trying to unload their homes. Airbnbs, I'm estimating about 75. Flippers, people that are, you know, bought the home, want to get rid of it, have to remodel it. It's about 900. And uh, so that only leaves 11,889 on owner occupied units. So where is the flood? of sellers panicking and trying to put their home on the market. And I, and I get comments that people say, well, you know, I'm seeing a lot more for sale signs on my street. Well, two is a lot more than, than last yeah. year. So <laughs> true. And we're seeing though, the, the listers are getting the message. They're down to 2021 levels when it comes to their average list price per square foot. That happened a little faster than I thought it would. Plus, hey, Rick, can I yes. ask you a question about that, though? Uh -huh. So is that based off the median list price? A average list price, not median. So, okay. Yeah, because median can kind of mess you up a little bit. Right. So here's the listing success rate, though, you know, 76 pretty soon. And I think I saw a video out there the other day that uh, and Crawford said <clears throat> that means that one in three listings are not going to sell they're not successful i'm getting a lot of people i want to talk about it when we're through this quick segment uh asking me what do i do um gee i've had it on the market for eight days and only had one showing and i'm, I'm getting a lot of that so so pat what the heck is going on in lending because it's every bit as stagnant as what we're seeing in listings this week I yeah i mean uh rates have had a good day today and a the uh, 30 year four and a half coupon is up 56 bips, which is a, that's a great day on the market. The, the 10 year treasury is down 30, 13 basis points to 290. So you can see right here, I mean, this is um, the last six months. We spiked on the uh, 10 year up to about 350. Now we're just kind of, we're kind of basing here. And um, I think, you know, there's obviously the Philly Fed said that there's, Several components that you know came in lower the lowest since you know since pre pre pandemic and we've got the Fed meeting next week so there's a quiet period right now in the Fed so they can't say anything but it's um you know rates have settled down I mean when we saw this spike up to around the um, 350 on the 10 year Treasury I mean we saw some lenders probably in this low sixes mid six percent range. Um, even maybe even high sixes to be honest with you, but um, right now I'm looking at a uh, rates uh, 
five and a quarter, five and three eighths. They settled back down. You know, yeah, I read fix. something. I can't remember if it was Bloomberg or Forbes saying that the the market is basically saying that there's no need for a hundred basis point kick mm -hmm. this month. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be, you know, it's going to be an interesting tug and pull between inflation and recession because um, I talked to my buddy who's a very successful businessman. He's got a president of a company, Chip, a, a chip company. It's uh, like a uh, sweet potato chip. He says this economy is going to start coming grinding, grinding to a halt. He's seen it in the, on the wholesale side on his end. He's a pretty smart guy. But uh, there's going to be that tug and pull between inflation and recession. And I think um, we're going to see, obviously, how it all tails out and this is what the, you know the market obviously with the rates kind of this is what the market's telling they're just kind of waiting and seeing and i yeah if they do if they do i, I still think they gotta they're gonna have to put bullets in the gun uh so that they can lower rates eventually um you know next six to 12 months down the road well um we're seeing so you and i talked a little bit about these um not so much adjustable rate mortgages but rate buy downs and a couple of things you've said are very interesting to me. And one is that a lot of the, what we call the major banks that have higher rates are using that rate buy down because they're already kind of starting out high. So they're mm -hmm. giving you the opportunity to buy it down. And for a lot of, a lot of viewers, it's confusing because we say things like, oh, it's a three, two, one, or it's a two, one, or it's a one, one. And the bottom line is there's adjustable rates that are three years, two years, and then one year they adjust. But, but one of the things that you said that stuck out to me was, um, you know, if you're already starting out at a lower rate, like what you can find through your uh, as a broker, um, there's still an opportunity for a 30 year buy down that a seller can use to contribute at closing costs for a buyer to bring the rate down even farther for the entire term, because that's the pinch point that the buyer is feeling right now. It's not so much the price of the home and they're waiting for you to lower the price of that house, but they're waiting for you to lower the price because they want a lower payment. So does it make sense to offer an incentive as a seller to say, and I'll open this up to the group to say, I'm willing to contribute X amount of dollars to help lower your payment for the entire 30 years? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, 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 the numbers definitely prove it that uh, just reducing a house by ten dollars or $15,000, uh, if somebody can reduce a house by, say, $15,000, it definitely pays to say, hey, we're going to keep it the same price. We'll contribute $15,000 to the um, – to the buyer because like in this scenario that I pulled up last night for this gentleman, um, rates were in like, say the five and three, eight, five and a half range. Like I'll just give you an example today, five and a half. I can give a credit of $1,500 or well, let's just say five and three. Eighths. It'd be a cost of a thousand dollars. Your payment's 27, 2,772. But with uh, $14,000, you can get down to four and a half and your payment goes down by about, let's see here, 20, bear with me here a second. Um, I should have had this. Uh, we'll go down to, yeah, $264 a month. That's fantastic. Yeah, so if you're considering lowering the price of your home, maybe a kind of amount of medium halfway and say, so I'm going to lower the price this much and I'm going yeah. to offer uh, credit because the other thing, remember, you're still going to have appraisal number you got to hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, and the thing of it is, the, the buyers can't qualify. A lot of buyers can't qualify in that 500 and below. You know, they, they need to be at the 300000 to 400000 and that's so hard to find right now. So buying down their interest rate allows them to be able to qualify for that little bit higher priced home. Yep. I agree. No, that's well, a good move. Well, let yeah, me yeah, really. Me. I want to jump in real quick. Can I jump in real okay. quick? Let me I just want to very, The 2-1 yeah. buy down, the 3-2 buy, one buy down, those are still 30-year fixed. But they use that money that yeah. that they use that money to, it's still, it's not adjustable rate arm. It's still a 30-year fix, but basically they start your rate at four and a half and then the next year goes to five and a half and then six and a half whereas a permanent buy down is still a 30-year fix but if you do a permanent buy down you can go from five and a half down to four and a half and it just stays there it doesn't move in the second or third year so yeah and I, that's I why those. yep mm -hmm. so i just want to clarify that that sounds good well so ladies now jackie you probably don't count because you spent the week <laughs> in california but uh since you've been back and ruby you've been out there uh out there killing it so is the slowdown that we're seeing in these numbers, um, do you feel it? I don't feel like we're feeling it. Um, maybe a little bit on the buyer side, but we both have buyers. Um, but we have four new, five new listings coming on over the next week or two. So we're 
we're still getting contacted by those sellers and we're still we're still out there pounding the how, pavement. How would you describe those people listening? Why are they listening? Go ahead, Jax. There's there's a variety of reasons, and I want to touch back to on the buy side as well here in a second. But um, I, I see no panic whatsoever. Either sellers are, um, you know, we've got a couple that are uh, selling and then buying another house um, just because of life changes. And then we do have some fix and flips that are coming on the market. Actually, one just went active today, uh, another one coming up. So I'm not seeing any panic whatsoever. Uh, the conversations that I'm having with sellers, it's just a need, a normal need that you would see in a normal market. Um, I, I think what I'm seeing personally the most, and that's why I asked you earlier, Rick, about was that the median list price? Because it appears for the listings I'm seeing, that the luxury end, the, except for seasonal areas, for instance, Cave Creek. Cave Creek always slows down. Carefree always slows down. There's parts of Scottsdale always slows down. Um, there's certain types of markets, like the horse market, always slows down at this time of year. But the majority of the listings that I'm seeing is very heavy ended on the 500 and below side. And I think a lot of that still is either um, Airbnbs, new builds, um, or people with second homes and they're just like, okay, well, we might've missed the peak. We'd, you know, there is some nervousness with sellers, you know, saying we don't know what's coming right now. And that's where they need a good educated agent to kind of guide them. Um, but you know, I, I think it's really heavy ended on the 500 and below. That's yeah. what I'm seeing. And I think, I think we, you know, we talked about a listing ceiling, but I'm, so you got a couple of forces out there. Like Pat said, it's looking like the economy is going to be really bad. I mean, it's going to slow down. And that's actually why mm -hmm. rates are not going up because every day there's more data coming out saying that we're in, we're in big trouble economically. So does that make you want to hurry up and sell your house? Probably not because you got a fixed rate. You want to stay put. How many people have a rate below 3% Pat in this country? Uh, well, there's like 31, 30 million below four, 31 million below four, like uh, 26, 27 million below three and a half and three and a half and below. Yeah. So they're not moving unless they lose their job and they have to sell, but they probably would get roommates or have somebody move in and help them with the payment, but they won't give that up. So it, it's looking more and more like real estates. Uh, I agree with Zuber. The transactions are going to crash and they already have. We're at 2,400 mm -hmm. today. Good Lord. I mean, for a seven day moving average. So transactions are down. But do you guys think we're just kind of kind of muddle along in this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not not a big peak for people rushing to sell their house and nobody in a hurry to buy one. Just da, 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 yeah, absolutely. I said that in January. A need a yeah. need as is need basis. Mm -hmm. What's fitting their need. And, and the and upper end just seems to be moving along like a normal market. Well, and then the other thing, and Pat and I discussed this yesterday, too, as well, uh, but when we're trying to analyze the market where we're at right now, we've never seen a situation like this where we had um, rates as low as they were ever. Yep. And now all of a sudden they've spiked up, you know, 2%, almost 3%. What do we have to go back and look at historically where we can say, well, the last time this happened, this is what happened to housing. And I'm, there's nothing out there. Yeah. Right. We don't, we, I mean, we had that 1%, we had that 1% jump in 2018 where things kind of condensed and slowed down a little bit for a short period of time. And then it just picked right back up again. Yeah. I think, I think this one's going to be more prolonged because the economy was recovering in 2018. The fed thought it was recovering too fast. So they wanted to clamp it down. So the markets revolted and said, no, it's not too fast. Leave it alone. But yeah, that's why I mean, the absolutely in the room here. What do you think Pat? <laughs> What's that? I said, let's go to the economist in the room here. What do you think? Yeah, Pat? no, I, mean, I I think the biggest the, the biggest elephant in the room is the fact that uh, 30 million, 31 million people, we never had that period in, in ever that we had about a two year period where people could get a two and a half. I mean, you, I remember there's a, a guy that got 1.99 uh, 30 year wow. fixed. Wow. 1.99. He's not moving. <laughs> I mean, he's not moving. He is not no. going anywhere. So I'm sorry, but if you get 31 million people that are 4% or lower, um, or, you know, I said 26, 27 million, three and a half. I, I bet you if you, you surveyed 5,000 people, I bet you 
4,995 of them say, we're not moving. We got, we're good. We're, you know, we're good to go. So I, that is, I'm telling you, that's a big sticking point with me. And I just think that's, uh, that's why you're not seeing, you're not seeing the home velocity back in the old days. If rates were kind of, if we get to a point where we get rates come back down and there's an equilibrium, now there's such a gap between where people are and where rates are that, that, that gap is um, until that gap, I think gets down to where if rates come back down to say a low three, you know, then you're going to have that velocity again. Like, okay, let's, we can get a three and a half percent mortgage. So th that's a big sticking point with me. I think there's just, that's what's constricting the supply. Well, I Absolutely. think, yeah. And it's going to be very interesting to watch because uh, you know, the, you've got these components that say, well, I'm, I'm waiting for a crash and uh, um I'm not seeing any evidence of, of anything to wait for. And then people that are waiting for house prices really to come not. down, um, you really need to look, at, and I stress you to use that calculator that we provided that says, well, how far down do prices need to go to where you have an interest? Mm -hmm. Because there's something about saying, well, now it's $85,000 less. I'm, I'm in. When are you in? No. I mean, <laughs> if you're right. sitting back and waiting, what are you waiting for? So if it's an $85,000 price reduction, versus maybe a rate buy down um what's the trigger you really want to pull does that make sense mm -hmm. absolutely i be think it would be great if pat could actually do a show where he just shows examples of the numbers because i think if if you've got a good agent and they're being educated by a great lender on those type of programs i mean it's that whole saying you know marry the rate not the house yeah. And well, but I think the opportunity for buyers now is now sellers are going to be willing to contribute that. And that's why I'm really yep. advocating the rate buy down. Not, not that I want buyers to have to come up with more money. I'm saying, right. look, you got sellers out there now. Like one gentleman called me this week and was saying, well, I'm probably going to lower my price 40,000. And I said, well, why don't you lower it 20 and then kick in another 20 to buy the rate down. Mm -hmm. Start thinking like a buyer. Mm -hmm. yeah. buyer doesn't want right. to pay that rate. They don't want to pay that payment. Mm -hmm. But wait, if you're offering to lower their payment, that's better than a price increase. Because if you go down 40000 yeah, so did your neighbor. Right? It'd be, right. <laughs> it'd be interesting to have Ruby and Jackie, the, the people that you've uh, done deals for the last two years, to go back, I don't know what the number is, but go back and see what, you know, what their at rate is and see how many people – how many people are just sitting tight, do a survey amongst your old clients? Yeah, we can do that. I mean, yeah, kind of say yeah. we call, we call 30, 40 people, you know, we're, what rate are you at? Okay. I'm at two and a half. Just, it'd be interesting to say we called 30 people. And now those 30 people, 26 of them said they're not moving anywhere. And we just gotta mm -hmm. be kind of a fun little, I mean, I don't know. That's just a, yeah. But, well, even I mean, the people that well, bought in 2018, 19, they refied. So they're down yeah. there too. I know. Right. And that's, that's why I think it's uh, it's it's a glaring point. Well, two weeks don't make a trend, and I'm seeing that number kind of flatten out and go down a little bit. Um, the National Edu National Association of Realtors came out with the June numbers, and it's you know they're they're showing how bad June was. So now we wait, and we see if that's really going to impact the market. But I think the general public is not in the dark as much as they used to be during cycles. They they know yeah. what's going on. They can tell. And they can see what's going on in this market. So I don't, I don't think that's going to be quite as huge a catalyst as some people say it is. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And I plan to be back uh, next week, so I probably won't be up in the mountains hiding behind trees. So we will see everybody then. Take care. All right. All right. Bye. Take care.